Oh yeah, welcome. You join me in sunny England, um, where it's just drizzling at the moment. Um, and today we're going to be talking about brine shrimp. Now, I've got a brine shrimp pond down here that I need to explain to you, and hopefully I'll show you um, the benefits of it and just how easy it is to maintain. Um, I set this pond up uh, when I first moved in, so that's three months ago. Because um, you moved into the new house, we've got a lovely greenhouse uh, which we're growing all our plants in, and I've got a few buckets of um, things growing in here as well. So let's dive straight into it and I'll, sh I'll show you my pond. So here's the pond. As you can see, I've turned the bubbler off at the moment, but there is lots of um, protein that gets taken to the surface, and I simply get my net here, which is just a one pound net from I think it was probably Lidl attached to a piece of wood. So it's a bit longer, and I just I just get the foam off and chuck it down there, and that that is essentially what protein skimming is. Um, but it's not obviously as advanced. It requires manual labour, and it's nowhere near as good as having a real protein skimmer. But if you had a real protein skimmer, all the brine shrimp would just be sucked up, um, and you wouldn't have anything left. So let's try not to get any uh, glare. Here we are. As you can see, it is absolutely filled with brine shrimp. It's quite hard to focus on them because they are brine shrimp. Uh, they are they are little, but the brine shrimp in this pond are about three times larger than the brine shrimp you'll buy in the shop. Now, whether this is because of the species or simply because they are cultured in a way that is more suitable for them, um, I, I'm not sure. But if you can see on uh, lots of these brine shrimp here, especially this one, if you can follow my finger. Um, you can see they've got eggs. Now these are female brine shrimp, um, which have uh, a few hundred eggs on them. Uh, and they will be hatching uh, and essentially giving live birth um, in this tank. So there's a perpetual uh, reproduction in this tank. Now. This tank is three, uh, 275 litres, it cost me £70, and I used it as a fish holding tank when we were moving. Now I didn't have any use for it um, once we had moved in, so I, I decided that what I needed to do was get some brine shrimp. Now I don't have an underwater camera, if I did I'd love to show you, but sadly at the moment I don't. Um, so I've got one thing better, we're going to put a few of the brine shrimp um, into uh, this pot and you can see them. I've got some better footage that I'll put up in a minute uh, which can show you the iridescence on these brine shrimp. They actually glow, um, they've got rainbow colours coming off their tail when their sun hits them just right. Obviously I can't show you it today um, because we are in England. Uh, but. I'm using a 180 uh, micron mesh sieve. Um, you can buy these online or you can make them yourself, uh, but they're relatively cheap. If you don't have anything like this, you can um, use, uh, what's it called? Cheesecloth, something like that. Um, and you can see, just so I catch these out, um, they are different to the stuff you get in the shop. Um, you can see they've got a clear black line on them. Um, where, and that's where they've been feeding uh, and you can see they're, it's a better colour as well so let's go ahead um, and chuck them into here if we can get all of them out um, as you can see we've got juveniles and we've got adults in here uh, we don't have any noplii uh, the, this doesn't seem to be able to catch them uh, which is a good thing because it means that um, they can go ahead and breed. So you can see we've got tons and tons of live brine shrimp in there and what you can see uh, in them, because of the normal brine shrimp you get at the shop, uh, they will essentially be clear. What you can see is spirulina. Now I just use an organic spirulina powder. Uh, this is something that you can buy at a health store. I got mine on Amazon. Now you don't need a lot. Um, in fact I use a a very little amount and I only do it once or twice a week. Um, you can culture brine shrimp in something like this, um, however 
you're you're not going to have as good a result because obviously ammonia can build up in there. Um, now, let's see if we can zoom in. Yeah, they 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 are just beautiful these brine shrimp. Um, in comparison to what you get, and why would you want to do this? Well, the main reason you'd want to do this is because essentially the fish we get in from the shop. So I'm talking about marines here. Um, if you're a freshwater breeder, um, this will sort of apply to you anyway. Um, but f for marines, uh, a lot of our fish don't eat. I had an extremely low survival rate um, when I first started keeping saltwater fish. Um, it was actually about 50%, which is ridiculously low, um, and I, I accept that. Uh, now, as soon as I've got this pond, I have bought do, 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 about seven more fish. Um, so in total, before I moved, I bought about 20 fish with a 50% survival rate, and I bought seven new fish um, here. Uh, the new house and every single one of them has eaten on the first day now I put these completely down to having a lot of brine shrimp um, because they are just such a good food source and if you have something like seahorses um, or pipe fish these will be perfect for them um, live food anyway is just brilliant for your uh, fish they, they will do a lot better on them um, and your corals will attempt to eat them as well especially if you've got some, something like a sun coral um, now in terms of maintenance um, on the pond uh, what you'll want to be doing um, is I have I did do a 25 litre water change on this uh, when I first started um, it, which isn't really a significant amount uh, it's about 10% um, of the total volume but that was before I had sea lettuce in here because um, I've got quite a bit in here I put most of it in here for the mice when they come tomorrow but there is quite a lot of the bottom um, now what you want to be doing in terms of feeding either you can feed them live phytoplankton that is a lot of work for brine shrimp if you're feeding copepods it's necessary it, feeding copepods yeah it'd be necessary to use live phytoplankton but with brine shrimp, you can just use spirulina powder. And for the entirety of this pond, I will just do about that, and that will feed them for a few days. Um, it makes the water go quite a nice green, and you will get lots of bubbles um, when uh, the air stone comes back on. Now, I just have a simple air stone with a USB air pump hanging up here. I think that's something like one watt, so they're not gonna contribute at all um, to your uh, household bill uh, you could if you run that for a thousand hours it's going to cost you uh, 15 pence something like that so that's a few that's about a month 15 pence a month to run a brine shrimp pond isn't very expensive you don't want to be using um, fresh water uh, when I say fresh water I don't mean water without salt in it I mean fresh water as in water which has not been seeded with any bacteria um, when you're starting up your brine shrimp pond, you want to be using uh, wastewater from your reef tank or your saltwater aquarium. Uh, if that is not an option, I'd say wait a little while um, once you fill the pond up with the salt water, just to let it establish a bit more. Um, maybe put a bit of spirulina in there, the ammonia will go skyrocket and then you'll get some bacteria um, growing in there. Now the brine shrimp um, when adding the brine shrimp, I added brine shrimp eggs. Um, they're a lot cheaper than adding a few thousand brine shrimp in here. Um, so you, you literally, uh, about half a teaspoon will do the entirety of this thing. Um, I have been harvesting this probably every other day um, for three months and I still have a vast amount of brine shrimp in there as you can see because they're now breeding. Um, I do see dead ones occasionally but I, I, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm, I'm sure they're eaten by the other brine shrimp they cannibalize. Um, and there is mulm at the bottom, but I I see that as a good thing. Um, and the reason I have it in a greenhouse is because on even days like today, um, which if I open, isn't really the best. Um, this 
uh, greenhouse stays warm. Uh, not as warm as it would have because I've, I've got some windows open and that just because uh, it has been hot recently. Um, it will stay about 14 degrees at the moment this time of year. We did start off quite cold actually the past few months, but it was still at 14 degrees in this um, in this greenhouse, and they were they weren't breeding at 14 degrees. I can't say that they will breed at 14 degrees because they weren't able to breed at 14 degrees because they were still not the eye. Um, they've only recently matured in the past sort of two three weeks, um, and have started breeding. I did add a few more baby brine shrimp in here uh, around about three weeks ago because I didn't see any eggs, and then as soon as I added them, I saw more eggs. Um, but it's going really well, and I will show you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go inside in a minute uh, with all these brine shrimp, and I'll feed them. Um, so as we wake up, there's my main reef, uh, and we are going to go over here uh, to the, not quarantine tank, because it isn't a quarantine tank. Uh, my quarantine tank is uh, currently being built, and um, I've got a bit more welding to do today. Let's take the lid off. This is the holding tank, essentially. So we've got some English shannies in here, two mollies, two raw gramas, a convict tang, four uh, marginated cardinals. Uh, and a yellow jawfish. So, and oh, and about ten uh, common prawns. So, obviously, this is overstocked, but this is a temporary, uh, a temporary arrangement. And because of the macroalgae, and this tank has been set up for six months, it is capable of taking that. Um, so let's go ahead and feed them. And as you can see, let's quickly get all that in there. Um, all of the fish immediately. There you are. We've I've had him for three days, um, and he's eating. Um, same with the royal grama. Actually, that's alive. Had that one for two weeks. The other royal grama uh, is the new one, um, but I'm sure he'll come out in a minute. And you can see those marginated cardinals eating as well. They are nice and fat. And all the shannies, which are an English fish actually, that I collected myself, all have quite a nice big belly. Um, the convict tank. Uh, he doesn't seem to be too interested in um, uh, any sort of meat at all. He's he's only really gone for uh, algae. And do you know what? He's a tang, but he's a herbivore. I wouldn't expect any less. But that is quite a shy fish who's coming out um, to eat for me there. Uh, and I, I, I think this is probably the best thing you can do for your fish. And that is to feed them live food when they first come in. You can see how busy they are, how happy they are. Um, it is really the best thing you can do. Um, now, obviously, if you've got smaller fish, you want to feed them smaller brine shrimp. Bigger fish, bigger brine shrimp. So that's where the micron meshes come in handy. Uh, you can get a kit um, online. Um, if you are thinking about culturing, um, essentially, you've got all the different size meshes. Um, I think it goes up to 250 uh, down to I think there's yeah 10 250 down to 10 microns um, and that will do everything you want that is cockroaches don't mind that um, so yeah I think past part of my success recently um, has been uh, these brine shrimp um, also I have just evolved in the hobby so it could be that I'm getting better at what I'm doing um, evidently uh, it hasn't all woken up yet but my reef tank's looking good uh, I haven't got the orange filter in there for you but it's looking pretty good at the moment uh, but because I'm in a new house all these should hopefully be going in sheds um, and I will be having a 6 foot reef um, along here uh, <laughs> these haven't got algae blooms um, I just haven't cleaned the glass and we've got tons of macroalgae growing in there for the copepods. Um, and I'm hopefully going to be using this tank for either spawning mandarins um, or pipefish. Or seahorses, perhaps. But we'll find out. It's got a bit of overkill at the moment. It's got a Kessel 360. But, yeah. Here we are. Anyway, that's uh, my little rant about brine shrimp. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and I will see you later.